So there's just a couple things I'd like to add to that uh, coal pits oscillator video. I've changed the circuit just uh, slightly. I did as I suggested in the um, description and I wound 35 turns on this marker here and then put some tape around it to hold it in place and to use that as the coil instead of this uh, factory made one here. So it, it I don't know exactly know what the uh, uh, inductance of this guy is but it certainly works as you can as you'll see on the uh, scope here and this is what this circuit looks like I've changed it ever so slightly here's my uh, 35 turns on the on the on a form the roughly half an inch 12 millimeter diameter I've also taken that uh, DC blocking capacitor that was right here and I simply put it up over here so it blocks the entire tank circuit right here um, at the frequency that this operates at, that's less than one ohm of uh, reactance in it. And uh, yeah, just just the, just the basic coal pits oscillator nonetheless. And we can see up on the, uh, on the scope that it's running at about 9.93 megahertz. So kind of cool. Um, I've got a ferrite uh, uh, core right here. This core actually goes inside of this. There's You'd wrap whatever windings you want on side out uh, on the outside of this uh, blank form here, and this screws in and out to adjust your inductance. And we can see that as I uh, put this ferrite inside the in, inside the coil here, we can see up on the scope here just how much it changes, and it'll do over a megahertz easily with uh, just inside of this guy. So, um, and one more thing is uh, the. Uh, uh, if you should decide you want to use this with a crystal, what you would do, or what you could do, is you would put the crystal right here instead of the coil. The crystal would just go across this, and you wouldn't even need the 0.1 microfarad here to isolate that necessarily, because the crystal doesn't uh, doesn't conduct. It's just a piece of uh, quartz, so it doesn't really conduct electricity across it. And another thing is, um, when I showed the uh, from the previous video, when I showed the output of this on the spectrum analyzer. All I did was take the connector straight off of the oscilloscope and plug it into the spectrum analyzer. Um, it, it knocked it more, down more than enough to uh, be below what the spectrum analyzer uh, would like as a maximum. Uh, spectrum analyzer inputs are often very sensitive so you always got to be careful. So that that 9 mega ohms that's inside of this here uh, into the 50 ohm input on the spectrum analyzer knocked it down far more than enough and I wasn't concerned about actual levels on the spectrum analyzer. I was more interested in the frequencies that we were going to see. So that's just a couple of tips there, a couple of things that I wanted to add on to this. And uh, hope you have tried building this little guy. It's uh, fairly fairly straightforward and um, and fairly forgiving. So uh, again, let me know if you've, you've done so.